that don't nobody else want? Don't make no sense. But it's stupid stuff like that. It's stupid stuff that we defend over or fight over. You know, and now, as again, you're young people, you know much better than I. I grew up in a day when I lived in the West Side, when if you were a member of the Vice Lords or the GDs or the Stones, whatever, that was your fraternity, that was your group. You defended one, that was your brotherhood. Now, in the last two years, 70% of the shootings that took place in the South Side area in gangs was within the same gang. GD shooting other GD, BD shooting other BDs. Are you serious? That's just how stupid it is. Over some respect, or over some incident, or a card game, or, or, or whatever. So it's just, it's just really gotten, it's gotten crazy. And let me just finish the one thing. I to, the crazy thing of it is, that is what the system wants. The system loves to sit back and say they're doing things and watch people shoot each other and kill each other and, and watch people move out because when people say we're so violent here, we got to get up and move. Go ahead, y'all keep moving, and then we're going to come back in and gentrify that community and turn it into another whole neighborhood, like they did with South Loop or West Loop. So, the, the thinking of what gang is today is just crazy. So we got to stop it from, from destroying communities, destroying lives, and letting other folk take advantage of it. So may I ask somebody else first for it? Do you have one? Anybody else first? Okay, go ahead. I know from my personal, but from others in my family. I have a cousin who grew up like in the high rise era in Chicago, from the era of the And when he came home from jail, I asked him why did he go back to it. He said it's not the same. Like how you said, we're the same game. Mm -hmm. Like he gets real trouble when it comes to like drug income. So, like, if like, from like, say from like 59 to 69, it was GD. Right now, they break up to their own cliques. And they don't And one of the reasons that is, is because there's no money in drug dealing right now. None. Brothers on the street doing this, you know, how many in here know anybody on the street that sells drugs? No, just know somebody. Okay. They ain't making no damn money. <laughs> you see them out there with the same shirt, the same pants, every day, same coat on in the wintertime. They ain't making nothing. They're fighting over leftovers. You know, they're not making any money. The people that are making the money, they ain't down there in the street. You know, we have 40 below wind temperatures this this summer, this winter, and people stand out there trying to make a little money selling something? Are you kidding me? You make more money at McDonald's than you can out there right now. And unless you're up here, and the people up here ain't touching it, ain't dirty, ain't going to jail, ain't going to get shot. So they come in and roll in the neighborhood, have some people work for them, and guess what? If, if you're selling drugs on this corner and you get shot, fine, bye, later, and I'll put somebody else out there mouth because somebody else is waiting to do it. I got, I got about 15 guys that I communicate with at least, at least once a week who are in prison right now. And I have them with commissary. I keep connections with them. They help me still do, create some, some peace out of the street when the, when the beef comes up. And they're sitting there saying, Dumbest thing I ever did in my life, getting involved in that. I'm sitting here, and guess what? My, all my homies, who were my GDs, my BDs, my Stones, my all this, ain't giving them a penny in commissary. Ain't coming to visit them. And then they're forgotten completely, so what happens? They come out of prison, and they ain't nobody, nobody cares about them, nobody thought about them. So now they come out and go, i got to make a name for myself in the street. So some guy's out two weeks, and he wants to go shoot somebody. So everybody says, oh, oh, he's back home, and now Cup is home, and he got out, and he wants to shoot people. Cup. <laughs> Y'all know Cup? <laughs> Cup is a major dealer in, well, uh, the Kid Awards. Cup. He's staying in Iowa. <laughs> he just makes money. But it's just, that's how crazy it is, because there ain't no money out there, so they're fighting over little stuff. And my, my, my what I say to brothers all the time is, why are you, like I just got three brothers jobs um, through a training program that I now work with CTA 
the lowest of them is making 30 grand a year. The highest the guy, he just became part, uh, uh, coordinator for the Howard Street Station. This guy, Alfonso, he's now making $45,000 a year. And on the street, he was making about 6000 a year. So my thing is, okay, I want you to make money too, but I want you to make real money, not this play stuff. <laughs> and you got to keep looking behind your back or wondering if you're going to get shot or go to jail. And here's the other problem, which most of you know, you are black and Hispanic, you're going to go to jail perhaps for five, six years for something that a white person in North Shore is going to go to jail zero time and be on house arrest. This is the reality of the system. So why are you setting yourself up to be locked up? That is fighting over nothing. Yes? Um, how do you feel about the safe passage? The safe passage thing? Like they closed down the schools and one side, on one side of the game, like you can open up a little Don't get me started on the school closings because I am, it was absolutely ridiculous. It should never have been allowed to happen. The school closing that took place in my mind was absolutely ridiculous. Largest closing of schools in the history of our country. But, that aside, it happened, and then people are brought into other neighborhoods. Now, I'll tell you two sides of the safe passage thing for me. First of all, putting the signs up in the neighborhood, I scream crazy about that. That's another stereotype. Some people drive, oh, safe passage must be a dangerous place, so i got to get off this street. You know, well, are you crazy? So we put these signs up. No other neighborhood, no other community would have tolerated that. But the other part of it is this. The fact, he, I, okay, I, I, went, I went down some years ago to speak for the I, I, Anybody ever hear about the Little Rock Nine? Yeah. Okay, Little Rock Nine, kids trying to go into school, integrated school, Central High School in Little Rock, Arkansas. And a number of those students, of course, a lot of our, our friends of mine, spoke for their anniversary in Central High, which is just like it was today back when, this, when the incident happened. But um, they had to have National Guard be on the streets for them to get to school safely. The black kids were going there a little while and in Central Black. Now to say we got to have people out here so our kids can go to safe. I grew up, and you talk about the, the, the projects or, or public housing as, as we, the, the term is. I spent a year and a half living at the Rockwell Projects on the west side of Chicago at Congress and Western, 340 building, apartment 910. There was all sorts of gangs in the west side at the time I was living there. But you never had to have safe passage in order for a kid to go to school, even if they were crossing gang lines uh, back and forth over the expressway. The reason being, at that time, that there was, a, there was a, just this mentality, even amongst the, the roughest gangs in the city, you didn't mess with children, you didn't mess with mothers and elders, you didn't touch them. There, if you were a, a gang member and you had shot a mother or you had shot a child and you went to county jail, your life was in danger. Because it was that kind of a, a, a value system, you didn't touch children. In particular, grandma school said, no, you didn't touch them. You weren't going to be a children uh, shooter or killer. Nowadays, the fact that we've got to have people out here to watch our young people to go back and forth to school. What the hell is that about? I think it was gang, young, getting young, getting younger. And I agree. I agree. But I'm saying even if gang members are getting younger and younger, there was a thing as people going to school. I remember when, when Hoover and, 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 and um, the, 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 the guys were all now locked up. When you didn't touch kids going to school. You didn't. Jeff Ford and Larry Hoover would have told you, a kid going to school, leave them alone. Now, on the weekends or at the park or something else going on, that was different. But a child going to school, there is no way in the world they would allow their gang members to touch a child going to school. You left them alone, hands off. Now, you know, and you got in the, in the, any gang that I've dealt with, will always tell you the same thing. The craziest members of the gang are the young shorties. The 1450, because they're trying to make a name. They're trying to be something. Okay, you can be something. Come on over 26 in California. I'll knock you up. Be real something. 
stand in front of a judge and go sit in a jail cell with the 7,000 other people waiting on court cases at 26th California. So what's so stupid is, is that is the, the, the respect lines used to be out there are not there. And now we have to pay. Now, on the other side of that coin, <laughs> I told you I would take two sides of the same passage, there is 12,000 people, no, 1,200 people, while getting jobs through Safe Passage from the neighborhood. So, you know, I, I'm going to play whatever side I need to get jobs. <laughs> we have 45 people in our neighborhood that have uh, gotten jobs through Safe Passage. We pay in the mornings, the afternoons, we watch kids going back and forth to school. So if it creates a job system, I'm all for it. There, now there's a bill that was just passed in Springfield about buses, or the Safe Passage, that buses have to be provided. Now I'm against that. I'm against that because if you do the bus thing, then those 1,200 people get fired immediately. That's 1,200 jobs in the neighborhood. <coughs> so I, I think it's ridiculous we have to have it, but if it's creating 1,200 jobs right now in the market where they say there's 6 point whatever percent unemployment in the nation and there's anywhere up to 28 to 32 percent unemployment and angle and all regression, creates a job, I'm going to roll with it. Yes. The, the, the key word about everything you just said was they watch. Is what? Is that they watch. Mm -hmm. That's all they do is watch. So if something was to happen, they're not going to do nothing. They're just going to watch. They're going home. <laughs> so, I mean, like, I feel like it ain't no point for them to be there because they just watching. I well, can watch people too and get paid <laughs> for it. But well, if you're not doing nothing about it, then... Like, 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 say for example, we come down this street right now. We come down 56, walking towards Western. Fight break out. They gonna break out their little handy dandy notebook <laughs> and write down what happened. That's it. It ain't like they got some type of secret flashlight or something or some type of taser or something. They ain't got nothing. They just sitting there watching. They just got on the vest. Well, the perception is supposed to be, and you're right, you're absolutely right. Perception is supposed to be that they build some relationships and try to squelch some stuff before it happens. And that even in the watching standpoint, if I'm watching you and I see you started the fight, then I know who did it. I, I, I'm